CBS News. Washington State's volcano erupts in a major explosion, and nearby communities are prepared for lava flows which have so far failed to materialize. I'm George Herman reporting on the CBS Radio Network. Mount St. Helens blew up with a bang a little more than three hours ago, and there was no there was one report that lava had begun to flow from its crater. But although flash flood warnings are in effect in case of lava or mudslides, none have appeared. The action is all in the sky, as Ron Katzer reports from nearby Cougar, Washington. It's erupting like it never has before, that's for sure. Because from where I'm standing, I can't see the top of the mountain, but I see the whole eruption coming from it. It's it's big. Big boiling when it was kind of a dark color. The lightning in it was just atrocious. Just streaking and flashing all over. Kind of pretty in a way. It's still pretty, but we don't know what it's going to do. <laughs> the blast, measuring about five on the Richter scale, shook a lot of people, some of them out of bed, but no injuries or new damage is reported from the volcano area. Mount St. Helens will never be the same again. This morning's violent eruption has killed at least five people. At least three others are still reported missing. The black cloud of smoke and ash poured, billowed up from the top of Mount St. Helens shortly after 8.30 this morning. One eyewitness described this day as looking like the end of the world. The end started at 8.30. 8.32 a.m. when two strong quakes measuring 5 or 5.1 on the Richter scale rocked the volcano almost simultaneously. Seven minutes later, 8.39, a tremendous blast shattered the Sunday morning calm. A blast heard as far away as Vancouver, British Columbia. A blast, some say, that rocked the courthouse in Port Angeles. Smoke and ash billowed 66,000 feet, almost 10 miles above the summit of the 9,600-foot mountain. It triggered mudslides, a 12 to 20-foot wall of mud, water, and trees came crashing down the mountain at 20 to 25 miles an hour, racing through the Tootle River Valley. It demolished highway bridges along 504 and a railroad bridge in its race toward Interstate 5. The skeptics are turned into believers at 8.32 a.m. Half a cubic mile of dirt slides into the Tootle Valley. Pieces of earth are blown skyward at 650 miles an hour. It's almost like an atomic bomb blast up there. It's just, you can't believe it. 1,000 feet of Mount St. Helens explodes in the biggest landslide in recorded history. Uh, from my own uh, knowledge, that looks to me is a beautiful story. I can't get you closer for your uh, pictures, but I really think that this is the uh, best we can do. Now, the after flight crew, uh, uh, we appreciate that. That's beautiful. Oh, that's a hot ground, boy. Hand on. Jeez. 150 square miles of timber are blown down, choking the Tootle River below, turning it into a smoldering torrent of mud and wood. I saw places that I, of people that I knew where there's nothing there. It's just wiped like a crumb off the off the table, you know. It's just It's just gone. The blast kills 57 people. Many others barely escape. And something knocked me down, I don't know what. And I felt the burns coming in, you know, just burning me all over the place. I thought I was going for sure. Four of us going. We got in the truck, we probably sat there for 45 minutes. And people were just, oh, they were just in agony, you know, with the burns and all. Get up, Clifford! It is a nightmare no one will ever forget. And then the smell of the sulfur and of the ash and of the different colored waters that seem to all smell differently and then the smell of death are, are things that uh, are just as vivid as the visual sights. We made it about oh, three miles out of Morton when all of a sudden we got into the uh, uh, so rain and it was raining mud, literally just like driving through a waterfall with ink. And uh, the mud just uh, continually coming down harder and harder and uh, of course, the wife and the children become very nervous, so I turned around and started back towards Morton, and it continued worse, and uh, you couldn't see. I had the headlights on, uh, the windshield was completely obscured, and you could only drive about uh, 10, 15 miles an hour. We continued on out of Morton, and uh, the uh, siren, was, siren in the city of Morton was going then, and uh, people were leaving and uh, driving out uh, Highway 7. And uh, I knew approximately where the edge of this cloud was, and that's what I was heading for, is to get us out of it, uh, but you couldn't see. And uh, I climbed out of the car twice to uh, get the mud off the windshield, and it was coming down so heavy, it was just completely obscured. And I was, I got wet and covered with this stuff myself, and uh, so uh, we continued on, and uh, it was stop and go with the traffic. Uh, the cars were pulled over, stopped in the middle of the road, you couldn't see taillights. 
and it would and just just totally black and finally uh, uh, I'd say about uh, four miles from Elby we finally come out of it but the dust uh, from the ash had uh, uh, covered the road and the dust was dust was standing uh, four to six feet high off the highway and you couldn't see through the dust either and uh, finally that started to ease up as we got almost to LB so we pulled over and cleaned up the car and we uh, along with so oh, I'd say 15 or 20 other vehicles we stopped and started turning traffic back and uh, you, you couldn't even see uh, back towards Morton itself it was completely obscured must have been pretty frightening yes it was, it was uh, wife is still pretty shook and uh, kids sort of enjoyed it they're getting a big thrill out of it now but uh, it was a situation right out of, just straight out of hell well to God whoever finds this I don't know Oh, you can't see this, I'm sure it's, it's too dark. I've left the car behind. I'm walking towards the only lot I can see on top of a ridge. I can hear the mountain behind me rumbling. It's an enormous mud and water, so I came down and washed out the road. I honest to God believe I'm dead. There's really no, no way to describe those feelings. I feel the ash now in my eyes. It's getting very hard to breathe. It burns my eyes. Oh dear God, my God, this is hell. I just can't describe it, it's pitch black. Just pitch black, this is, this is hell on earth I'm walking through. Oh God, one step at a time, if I can just keep walking. God, if I can land, there's more air to breathe. Oh my God. Yeah. I got the wrong attitude here, man. This would be something to tell my grandchildren about. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> if only, only this air would clear for two minutes. Give me a clean, clear breath of air. I don't know what's in this stuff, man. I can tell you one thing. It's, this stuff is not made for humans to breathe. My God, I didn't realize how badly I wanted to live. Oh, I want to live so bad. It's completely, completely black in here again. I can't see, can't see a foot in front of my face. The ash is coming down very heavy on me. God, I want to live. You know, Shram, you were right. <laughs> you were right, Shram. When I saw that mountain go, I turned that car around, and I could see in the rearview mirror. You know, I could see the stuff coming. There was no way I was going to outrun that. I just parked that car and I started running for high ground. Never should have come up here. You were right. All of a sudden I realized I could breathe a little better. And I could see a little bit of greenness. It wasn't pitch black. I could see maybe a couple feet. Uh, at that point I took a photograph of myself with a wide angle lens and held the camera out in front of me and click. And I had a big smile on my face. I was just covered with ash, you know, just my hair was sticking straight out. but. Um, I think you can tell from the expression on my face, I thought then maybe I was going to get out. Imponderables dust the air like volcanic ash. Ten persons are known dead, 71 are missing, and one estimate is that it will take more than $150 million just for road and bridge repair. It is an event that defies superlatives. One geologist said today, there is no record in geology in the last 4,000 years of anything like this happening before. The tremendous lateral blast is unprecedented. And for one photographer, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. Gary Shepard reports on these remarkable pictures. Gary Lee Rosenquist had camped out overnight at Bear Meadow, eight miles northeast of Mount St. Helens. 27 years old and unemployed, he was hoping to get some good pictures of the mountain to help launch a career in photography. He got off to a good start. This sequence of photos was taken during the first 60 seconds of the mountain's eruption, beginning shortly after 8.30 on Sunday morning. Rosenquist and four friends barely made it out, jumping into their car and driving as fast as they could with volcanic ash and gases, as well as rocks and mud moving up rapidly behind them. They escaped with their lives and with these spectacular photos of the mountain's worst eruption in more than 30,000 years. Gary Shepard, CBS News, Seattle. President Carter left the White House today to fly to the Pacific Northwest where he'll look at the damage caused by Mount St. Helens 
Before leaving for Portland, the president declared Washington state a major disaster area, releasing federal relief funds. Officials say the eruption already has spewed almost as much rock and ash as Vesuvius dumped on ancient Pompeii. The White House also announced today the president will visit Miami later at an undisclosed date to assess the damage in that city's racial explosion. Weather makes it problematical how much Mr. Carter will see at Mount St. Helens. Terry Drinkwater has that story. At the command posts, it was a frustrating day. Rescue helicopters couldn't fly because Mount St. Helens was shrouded in dense rain clouds. Scores are still sent below the volcano, safe but anxious to be airlifted out. The rain and the runoff from the melting snow on the hot mountain is now bringing some rivers towards flood stage again. But geologists today were forecasting a quiet period ahead for the mountain. We're hopeful at this point that the stresses that have been building up have been released and that we're at least in for a, a, a period of regrouping without any particular danger at the moment. Last Sunday, when it blew, two other geologists were flying directly above what is now the crater and saw it all, Keith and Dorothy Stoffel. The whole top of the north side just began to um, uh, ripple and kind of uh, churn up, and everything to the north of that just slid away, just completely slid away, and within seconds after that, a huge blast occurred. The clouds, as, as they rose, what happened then? Um, they were billowing up almost like in big pillow sort of structures and at that point of course that we were I was terrified personally and we weren't sure that we were going to make it out of that situation at all. To the east in Yakima, Washington, residents weren't sure until today how they were going to get out of their situation. Volcanic ash everywhere. But tonight the mountain is just spewing steam. The worst of the ash problem may at last be over. Terry Drinkwater, CBS News, Portland. The Agriculture Department says it's too early to tell about the damage Mount St. Helens will do to crops and livestock, but just about any place in the area, life has changed dramatically since Sunday. For example, look at Ritzville, Washington with Harold Dow. Words just can't describe Ritzville, Washington. Three days after Mount St. Helens blew her top, smothering this central Washington community under five inches of volcanic ash. It looks like the aftermath of a brutal winter storm, but it's mid-May and the dust is much harder to remove than snow. Graders, snow plows were all pressed into service. Despite their unusual dilemma, residents manning shovels and brooms seem to be in good spirits. <laughs> Haven't seen anything like it ever. <laughs> Not at all. I tell you, I never want to see it again. The volcanic dust storm hit suddenly last Sunday afternoon. One minute it was sunny and bright. The next minute it looked like night. Ash falling everywhere. Well, the community did a great job. We had about 2,000 people stranded. They took them in their home, their churches, the schools full. We fed them good. Uh, no problem with food and medicine. And some of those who were stranded here feel the same way. They couldn't wait to leave. Incredible. I couldn't believe it. Um, it was scary. You know, you couldn't see in front of you. And, and started breathing the stuff and of course had no idea whether or not it was poison or harmful. In this convoy are some of the 2,000 people who have been stranded here since Sunday. Law enforcement officials have decided it is safe for groups of travelers to go. Everyone is leaving Ritzville in a cloud of dust. Harold Dow, CBS News, Ritzville, Washington. <laughs> World this week, the economy takes a new dive, and a crusty old man is found alive and well in the shadow of Mount St. Helens. Oh, well, what the hell? I wasn't afraid of it. I'm David Jackson, CBS News, reporting on the CBS Radio Network. As hope faded for the more than 50 missing around Washington's Mount St. Helens volcano this week, rescuers did find 75-year-old Ray Jennings and his four dogs in an ash-covered cabin near the peak. They'd been there since the big eruption, May 18th. The whole house was ro rolling. See, I had a glass of water on the table, and I could see that water moving, see. And the whole house was just rocking, you know, just like you're rocking in the chair. They did that all day. So I said, let it blow. What the hell could I do about it? And if it got too bad, I know how to get out of there in a hurry. Because I just got new plugs and points and trivia cap and everything on my car, so it's running pretty good. The World This Week. I'm David Jackson, CBS News.